<laughs> what's funny is a lot of people say, man, it makes your, it makes everything shrink. Well, actually your, your, Remember, you know, your unit, your unit will get bigger, but <laughs> oh, we're in. <laughs> hey, hey, Doc, you got an opening today at four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're all signed up. Uh, I've got appointments at two thirty. <laughs> so, how often are you? Can't, your your whole crowd just pulled off. The road. <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> Dr. Brock, hey, appreciate you um, for coming on to the Darren Woodson Show. Um, you know, a couple reasons that we wanted to, to talk to you today. Um, you know, obviously, this is, a, this is a really weird time for the medical community. Um, and it's just been really interesting. And, and there was a lot of thoughts early on in this pandemic that, you know, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of issues. Uh, we're not going to specifically talk about COVID. We're not going to talk about all that. But a lot of a lot of topics, especially men, that I think have been uh, issues that we've dealt with or have to deal with as as you age um, in, in multiple facets. And there's a couple a couple factors. And I'm going to read your bio just so our, our listeners understand the credentials that you have because it's it's unbelievable. And then I want to back up uh, and talk about kind of your journey and how you got into all of these different medical fields and serving patients and serving people. And then we'll talk a little bit about you know, hormones. And then we want to really want to hit on functional neurology, neurology at some point. Yeah. But. Because I mean, that's okay. a, that's a huge deal. Um, I mean, luckily Ben didn't play for too long. Uh, but Tyler Darren is definitely I, feeling the effects. Darren and I are Yuck. dumb as rocks. So. <laughs> well, I was, I was actually going to talk about a concussion amazing. story. I was going to talk about a concussion story and yeah. ask you a question on it. Yeah. So we'll get but to that in a little I'm bit. Gonna, I'm going to read your bio real quick and I apologize. I have to read it because it's so long. I did not have a chance to memorize the whole thing. But um, so Dr. Brandon Brock is a multi credentialed practitioner in Dallas, Texas, who holds a doctorate in family nursing practice from Duke University a doctorate from, in chiropractic from Parker University. Uh, he's a diplomat in functional neurology from the American Chiropractic Neurology Board, as well as a diplomat in nutrition. Mm. Uh, he has an extensive education in childhood disorders, uh, electrodiagnostic medicine, neurochemistry, and is a global clini clinical research scholar from Harvard Medical School. Holy smokes. Uh, with a specialty. Never, never heard of it. Yeah. And especially oh, in, in survey design and secondary analysis. Uh, from a family ma medicine perspective, Dr. Brock takes on tough cases and enjoys uh, integrative and interdisciplinary medicine for hormonal and autoimmune disorders. In orthopedics, he enjoys soft tissue and biomechanical therapeutics as well as molecular molecular you holy smokes say this medicine. is, brutal. So this is absolutely oh. brutal and rehabilitation <laughs> for joint and <laughs> musculoskeletal <laughs> disorders hey and i was voted as the best i was the best to read this read because if these two would have read it oh, it would have been all but bad I, but i do want to say this because i've bad. known uh dr brock for for a number of years and he's treated me as far as uh on the functional neurology mm -hmm. side and treated my wife and um, for multiple issues but you know, right now, Doc, you're you're getting your PhD in in cardiology, right? You're working on your PhD in cardiology. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. How the hell do you have time to have nice all smokes. these? Man, I, listen, I got a very uh, I, I got a, a very good wife. Yes, and, you do. Uh, and, Tell Tara we said and, thank you. <laughs> Tara, they're saying they and I got kids. They they carry pictures of me so they know who I am. <laughs> and I'm, I'm never forgotten. <laughs> Uh, well, and I, I want to, the last thing that I want to say about, uh, about your credential here, you is, got more, uh, there's more. Yeah. Man. So you were recently chosen as the first chiropractic neurologist of the year by the international association of top professionals. So that's a really prestigious award that you have on the, uh, chiropractic neurologist front. Um, so let's let's start there. Yeah, let's you start on the you on the jacked on the, him off for yeah. an hour <laughs> on his credentials. Hey, let's just go ahead. Yeah, let's man. go ahead. Trying to get some free services, fellas. Too, like, oh. Hey, remember who pumped you up when I come to your office <laughs> and that billing I'll, cycle comes? Uh, what? Yeah, what? I've got to be honest. What is chiropractic neurology? Yeah, that's the, always the the biggest question, and it's always the biggest thing of you know sort of bone of contention in the research world and that is number one why is a chiropractor dealing with the brain and i would say it's really not even chiropractic neurology it's just it's just neurological rehab that's functional and, and what that means is you know the brain is 
it's an anatomic structure. It's just sitting there. You know, you can see it on an MRI. You can dissect it out. You can look at it. But its ability to connect and to function can be changed or altered depending on if there's a condition that, that needs that. And so by the way we stimulate the brain and the way we do rehabilitation, we can make connections occur that are not either functioning good or have been damaged. And now that person performs the way they're supposed to, whether that be walking or it's, you know, performance enhancement. That's really what functional neurology is. Now, chiropractors put the term on it because a lot of chiropractors use it. So they call it chiropractic functional neurology, but there's a lot of disciplines that use it. Um, and so I just want to make that really clear. There's medical practitioners that use it. There's, there's even optometrists that are using it. Um, so it's becoming much more uh, in the literature, much more sort of accepted because we know the brain changes. And so if the brain changes, we can do some cool stuff with it a lot of times. I mean, assuming there's not something that's blocking what you're trying to do with the brain, like a hormone deficiency or a growth hormone deficiency, or they're super inflamed or they've got a terrible diet or, you know, something else, those things can kind of block the brain from changing or remodeling or developing what we call plasticity, which is connection and efficiency. So mm -hmm. you can see how important this might be for somebody that, you know, is maybe a football player that's had a, you know, a couple of head injuries. Mm -hmm. And now they're having some problems. We and and Darren can can tell you this. We did a lot of stuff where we went back and we increased function by identifying yeah. the area that wasn't so good, changing it, and they are you know much better. Yeah, so, yeah. Doctor Brock, talk about the old school mentality was you get a concussion, you damage your brain. You can't really heal the brain as you can heal the rest of the body. But now science and as you said, literature is showing that okay, you can actually repair, recover, and improve your brain function. So talk through that and maybe some of the methods that you guys use to improve the brain. Yeah, it's really, that's, that's, that is the question, really. And, uh, you know, we did have that whole thought where it's like, hey, look, you know, you, you got knocked out. Do you know where you're at? Okay, get back in the game. Yep. You know, and it was one of those things. And I, all of you probably played during that era at one point in time. I don't remember it. Or not. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, well, exactly. there, there, there you have it. As a fullback. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, look, man, we, we've learned to use medication that will help with certain components, and we've learned to use nutrition. So it's kind of been blended together. There really is not one that's better than the other. Every situation is different with every patient. So we activate the brain. Maybe we give a nutrient to help with, you know, the connectivity, and then maybe we use a medication to stop some inflammation or to help people sleep or to help with pain. Um, we do all these things kind of together. And we really called it, what we started calling it was a functional integrated neurology approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, it, it, it's just been fantastic. It's, it's really made a big difference in a lot, in a lot of people's lives. Uh, really, you know, with vets and athletes, uh, professional athletes of all types, hockey players, football players, a lot of female soccer players. It's unbelievable yeah. how many head injuries. Hey, so, Doc, talk to, talk to us about, because I went and saw you, how many years ago was that? About four or five years on the functional yeah. neurology side of things. And, and again, we, we are fully transparent on this show, and I want you to be as transparent as you possibly can be. But you uh -oh. saw me the first time that when, when I walked in that office, and we had a real, we had an awesome conversation about, you know, what I was feeling and what I was going through. And, I, and for, for those that are listening, man, I... I I had issues as far as holding on to information. Um, I was fatigued at, you know, at the weirdest hours of the day, 12, 11 o'clock. If I had to read something, I was like struggling, my, you know, like almost with a headache uh, going through the process. And you guys just witnessed that when I was reading the bio, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've already examined him, by the way. Yeah. He's ready to go. Yeah, Tyler, I'll have a, a script for you after this. <laughs> But after 13 years of play, you saw me walk in that office and tell, tell us what you saw when you, when, when, uh, I came through. Well, I'm, I'm going to go back before that a little bit and just say one thing, you know, growing up, I was like, he's the hardest hitting. I love watching play because he doesn't hold back. And then I remember thinking later on, like, how does he make it through that? <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're sitting in my exam room and I'm like, I, I can't believe this is actually happening because I've watched you play. I saw how, you know, I saw the absolute ferociousness that you used. 
And now you're sitting here and, and everything that I thought could possibly be going on, like the brain fog, the decrease in cognitive function mm -hmm. and the area that you use to hit people the most, you know, right here in this part of your head and just the, the shock that your body takes. The first thing that I, I really thought about you is I was impressed that you were doing as well as, as you were, because there's some former cowboys that I've seen that are not. Mm -hmm. um, so the resilience of your body was pretty impressive. And not only that, it was really the, the, one of the, the best things is that you were very upfront. Like, look, I'm, I'm having these problems. And, and a lot of athletes will not say they're having problems, especially when it comes to memory and physical decline. They just won't do it mm -hmm. because that's not their thing. Well, they admit were, it, then it, then it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, that's hard. So it's like an alcoholic saying, "Yeah, I got a drinking problem." You know what right. I mean? It's just not it's not an easy thing. So the biggest thing is, is Darren's like, "I got this, 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 and this." And so we ran all the labs, we did all the diagnostics, we identified everything that needed to be enhanced. He participated a hundred percent, and he reaped the benefits out of it. I mean. And now I, I see the guy. Last time I saw him, I'm like, man, do you look like you're ready to go try out again? Yeah, that ain't you happening. know. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's, I think he's got a good trainer. Let's say, <laughs> hey, his head yeah, may so. work, but his knees don't. <laughs> <laughs> I meant, I meant flag football. Right. <laughs> so, so what does that process look like? Darren walks in. How long does the, do all those tests take? Then, then the the prescription, the getting better aspect. What does that look like? Yeah, well, at that point in time, it was taking us about, I don't know, Darren, what do you say, about a half a day, maybe yeah. sometimes a day to evaluate somebody. I mean, it's, a, it's an extensive process. You know, and then running labs, you got to understand, we were running labs because e even like one of the topics study, like testosterone, we found that a lot of the people with head injuries, they just weren't making testosterone very well. Mm -hmm. It was a very common theme. Mm -hmm. And so we ran a bunch of labs, and then we sat down and we said, okay, what is this person comprised of? They've got this lab marker, this lab marker, their eyes won't do this, this part of their brain doesn't look so great, this joint's hurting, and we just put it all together into one treatment program to treat the whole person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people were like, man, you know, what you're doing is crazy. And I'm like, it's not crazy, it's really kind of the way healthcare should be. We're treating the whole person here, and we're not denying medicine. We gave medicine to a lot of people that needed it. But what we were also doing was enhancing all of the physiology and all of the neurology. And, and that's what we did with Darren. Darren was one of the early people that came in and, and went through the whole thing. And, and we identified a, a ton of stuff and we've worked together since then to talk about things and to go through stuff and to make sure not just him, but his family, you know, as healthy as possible. So it's, yeah. yeah hey man, those, those things are all cool. That's what I love about what I do. And, and that is treating a whole person, not just a single symptom. That's awesome. Which yeah. I think, I think it's become a problem nowadays. Yeah, yeah I, I have a physical therapy background and or, or worked in a physical therapy clinic. And so for that, you know, you show up with an injury. Hey, here's exercises that you do three days a week, whatever, a couple of months, you're good to go. What is the process after all the testing for the brain? Like what, what, what do you do to, to help yourself out? Well, I mean, we, we may say dietarily, don't eat these foods because they're inflammatory. We know that because of, we tested you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We may say you need you need more fat because we looked at it and that helps, you know, neurological function. Or we may give you some nutrients because it helps slow down some of the inflammation, which, by the way, is really the, the basement of that chronic traumatic encephalopathy that all of us are hearing about. You know, it's a brain that is inflamed and it's sustained and it won't stop. And so it just kind of just starts to die over time and after a while it degenerates to nothing so our thing was is to put somebody hopefully put them back together again and then when they leave they know what diet what exercises what nutrition and then ongoing neurological things whether it be a physical activity or even the way they think that keeps them in a steady state keeps them balanced allows their eyes to move the right way allows them to think the right way and perform the way they want so it was really a in the clinic, evaluate, get treated, and then when you leave, it was just contiguous. Yeah, we Sorry, lost we lost it. We <laughs> lost it there for a Technology, second. Technology, gotta love it. Uh, how have you seen the attitude towards th this kind of treatment change over the years? And the reason I asked that, I remember my first year playing in college, I was actually out wakeboarding right before training camp started. And I slammed the water really hard, didn't go unconscious, but I for sure had a concussion, was very disoriented. And two days later, camp started, and I was scared to say anything. I didn't want to say anything. And so I just went right through camp and just, just did it anyway and never brought it up. Yeah. 
How have you yeah. seen, this was 2009. So how have you seen people over the years change their mindset and how have we gotten better from that aspect? Yeah, that's another good question. So the cells that repair your, I'm going to make this very simple. The cells that repair your brain, when you get a head injury, even if you're not showing a lot of symptoms, they're doing their job, cleaning things up, kind of controlling the environment and fixing it. Okay. And this goes on for about seven to 14 days. Mm. Well, if you get another head injury during that time period, those cells are kind of like, Hey, what are you doing, man? Like, you know, we're trying to do our job here. Why do you keep agitating? us? Right. And as you do that, those cells are genetically changing and their receptor types are changing. And even the, the, the genotypic or the expression of those cells is changing because they're like, well, it looks like we got more stuff to clean up. And then if you get another one during that time, they may just say this, you know what? It, it looks like this is going to be a long standing issue. So we're just going to stay on. And when it does that, that's when you start getting sustained degeneration. So I'm a big fan of letting people, even if they're feeling better, give them time off, you know, 14 mm -hmm. days, 20 days so that those cells don't get stuck in a situation to where I have to work my whole life to keep those things from turning on mm -hmm. or, or, you know, yeah. to, to make them turn off. So you're saying I should have probably sat out a few days. <laughs> Pro, it, it explains yeah. everything yeah. right now. Yeah. That's, that's, right. that's very Dr. clear. Dr. to tell you that. I could have told you that. <laughs> hey, well, listen, I don't want to, you know, I think this topic that we're having, and I think it's my fault here because this topic that we're having, that's a whole new series as far as head injuries, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, neurological functioning. That's a, what that's the, what I wanted to talk to you today about were hormones. Yeah, because that's the big question that yeah. we're having. I know Tyler, of all three of us, yeah. have had this question, and we're hearing this not only just us three, but just friends, family, guys that are. Well, I'm the oldest by far. Yeah. I'm you know in my fifties. I'm early fifties, and these guys are in their thirties. But even them at their age right now, they're, they're you know, hormones are becoming an issue, man. And, and people just don't know where to go, how to be educated through that process. Give us a better understanding. And, and Tyler, you, and we talked yeah. a little bit about it, but give us an understanding of how we can go forward and get more information about hormones and how we can get healthier. Because right now there's times where, you know, a guy like me, I'm tired during the day. I'm falling off the damn I'm yeah. falling off the wagon at, at 12 o'clock, you know, one o'clock after I get done eating or whatnot. So give us a little bit more. Start background. drinking at one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wagon. <laughs> hey man, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Whatever your choice is. No, Darren, it's a good question. You know, what we're finding out is, is that, uh, you know, look in our mid thirties, testosterone starts to drop and then it's just downhill from there. You, you typically don't experience some of the symptoms maybe in your forties or your fifties. But most people are going to develop tiredness, fatigue, irritability, depression. I mean, let me just kind of rewind a second to go to the head injury. Think if you have a head injury and low testosterone, it's going to double the fatigue. It's going to increase the irritability. And testosterone can, it really helps your brain repair. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, my biggest thing is, you know, testosterone has been stigmatized as, oh, my God, it's performance enhancing. And, you know, you're going to turn into, uh, you know, rage and you're yeah, gonna yeah. tear the building apart you know it's, it's just not that way if you find the right practitioner yeah. they can get you in what i would call a therapeutic range not one of these gigantic performance you know enhancing. ranges weight yeah, yeah. There, and, and there's really give it to you the way that it needs to be given and there's different methods the right amount and everything is monitored with labs and all of the side effects can be controlled if you do this the right way it, it's really something that is, is a very enhancing experience if needed. Yeah. But the endocrine, you know, you know, most of the endocrine, you know, people, they only give it to those that really suffer terrible, what we call hypogonadism. You know, it's like really low, man. Like mm -hmm. it's just super duper low. We're looking at it as I can see it going down. I don't want it to go down to the points where you're completely shut down. I would rather kind of, Stop it before it gets down there and then get it level again and keep it there. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the difference is, and there's a lot of mm -hmm. testosterone is something we all have. There's no reason to stigmatize it. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up because that was actually one of the things I had down to, to, to bring up is the, the stigmatism that is associated with testosterone. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump on that side of it and then be the naysayer for it. Um, if I were to start taking testosterone, 
would I now not naturally produce testosterone going forward? And do I have to be on testosterone for the rest of my life? Yeah, those are very good questions. And so if you were taking quite a bit, the answer would be, yeah, you would stop making your own endogenous testosterone. Mm -hmm. Well, we can monitor that and we can give you the amount that you need to where you still have enough stimulating hormones to make some of your own. Mm -hmm. And there's other things that you can take that will keep your testicles healthy. And then there's different types of testosterone, you guys. There's synthetic testosterones and there's bioidentical testosterones. And we're finding now that some of the bioidentical ones don't have as much of a shutdown component and are much more level. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you need to really find, I mean, if anybody is looking for a practitioner, I'm not saying that has to be me, but if somebody's looking for a practitioner, number one, do they know how to monitor all those things? Do they know how to look at your safety? And do they know who the, the right candidate is? And then what method of delivery is there? And if you do all that stuff right, you, all you're doing is just making the body do what it should have been doing in the first place. Yeah. It's not really super physiological stuff that you would see, you know, like in a, you know, Mr. Olympia competition yeah. or something. Yeah. And I think, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll compare it because we just had Rich Froning on the show uh, not that long ago. And and there's a stigma to CrossFit, right? There's some of these gyms that are just, hey, we're going to go crush it. We're going to go as hard as we can. We're going to overhead squat snatch as much weight as we can. We're going to one rep PR. People get hurt. And there's a yeah. lot of issues with that. But if you go to the right, the right gyms that are doing it the right way, there are tons and tons of benefits. And I think of the same thing with, with testosterone right now in our culture is there's these men's tea clinics and all the, and no offense to these guys, but it's like, Hey, we're just going to pump in testosterone. We're going to test your blood. If you're low, we're just going to give you testosterone, not monitored real yeah. well. And yeah, you may feel better, but then you get the guys that are like, Oh, well, I just had a bunch of back knee and I was really aggressive. And you know, I, I'd hump a wall if, if the wall let me kind of deal, you know? So you hear <laughs> now, those now things. We know now, now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> if it let me, yeah. <laughs> but, but so, but it, to your point is it's finding the right practitioner, the one that is going to monitor it, use the right products, use the right method of, of delivery, which is, is a question that I do have that I want you to talk about the different methods of delivery. But, um, and, and that's, and that's it is finding the right person, someone that's not just going to be a glorified, and I hate to say it, it sounds bad, but a glorified drug dealer sometimes. Yeah, no, you're, you're right about that. And that's uh, as a healthcare provider. I mean, we have an interdisciplinary, you know, like multiple providers that, that I work with and we look at each case. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we kind of all look at it from the view of, you know, I would do this. No, I would do that. And so, there's there's that multi-dimensional approach but i mean one thing i would say is you know you need somebody that will not just look at your total testosterone and then just say ah it's not that good let's just give you a big dose and get you up way higher than you should be and then we'll see you in six months call me if you pass out kind of yeah. thing you know <laughs> um or you know or you or you pump the wall as you said <laughs> right that would definitely bring me back into your office <laughs> call me when you're first, done first, humping the wall and we'll give you some more <laughs> So look, uh, my thing is, okay, is, is testosterone turning into estrogen and causing secondary problems, right? That has to be monitored. Um, is, is it creating, you know, changes in your red blood cells where it's becoming too thick and so it could cause some problems? Is it turning into a situation where the level is just too high so you don't feel right? So all of these things, at least in our facility, are ratioed out. And then we look at all of the things that could happen and monitor those things for the safety of the patient. And then I give a uh, honeymoon, you know, where I take the patient off and then we do some stuff to detox them and then give some nutrients for a couple of weeks and then we can bring them back on it so that their body doesn't forget what it's like to function on its own without something being put into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So two part question. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Finish. No, no, I go ahead. Well, I'll just say two part question. So, uh, you know, I go, I go get my blood work done. First of all, what is a number that is concerning as far as low testosterone? Like what, what number are you looking for as a doctor to say, ah, oh, this person would benefit from that, from this treatment? I'll give you a total number. Okay. Which is what a lot there's total and free. So let's just go through total. So here's the ranges. Okay. And here's the problem. 300 to 1200. Jeez. That's a gap. It's, it's quite the range. It's normal. Yeah, I mean, that's so. I mean, at 1200, you've got a monster, and at 300, what you have is somebody crying during a Geico commercial. I mean, it's, 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 it's true. So, you know, what we kind of look at is we want somebody really to be between 500 and 750 or 800. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. That's that's the that's the low end. We want them to be up a little bit above that. My favorite number for most people is about eight fifty to nine hundred. Some people like a thousand. Some people function better at eleven hundred. It depends on how long you've been taking it and how how you know how big you are and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But remember, we try to get we try to get the lowest amount to make you feel your best. Mm. That's the goal. Right. And so if I can get those numbers, really, the number is kind of irrelevant to an extent. It's what number do you feel best at mm-hmm. that is not outside those ranges? Because I got news for you. I, I've had patients that have had more guys that have had more estrogen than testosterone. Oh, hmm. wow. And, and they, they're being deemed as okay, you right. know, by their, by their primary care provider. And, and that is not okay unless that's what you are wanting to do. You know, if you're wanting to do gender reassignment or turn that direction, I, I guess that's okay. But, you know, that's not what these patients were wanting. So they needed help. And so, you know, look, if there's an endocrine problem, we use an endocrinologist. If there's something that's wrong with your test, you know, your testicular system or anything in between, we work together. But when it comes to looking at values and optimization, we look a lot at that, you know, and those things are important to be able to define so that people don't see us as a glorified drug dealer. Yeah, that is right. by 100 percent not the point. So what are you seeing as far as most patients that are coming in to see you right now? What are some of the symptoms? I, I know like everybody's always talking about sex. They want to bring it like, you know, hey, yeah. you know, that's why my wife has <laughs> not let me go to see you yet. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. We're good. Another thing that none of you will admit. But it's also fatigue as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a great question. You know, fatigue, what are some of the symptoms? Yeah, I mean, fatigue has been a huge issue for, for you know, myself in, included as, as far as, you know, I, I just want to feel good. And I know you and I have had this personal, we've had this conversation, guys, in a room, one-on-one, and he's been like, yeah, your ass is getting old, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and, this, and it is what it is. But tell me, who, who are the patients and what are some of the symptoms that, they're, that you're seeing? Here's my typical patient. Okay, so they're they're getting you know belly fat. They can't get rid of it no matter what they do. Um, they Shucks. obviously have a lot. They, you know, <laughs> testosterone gives you your sex drive. Yeah. And, and and sexual function. It, it serves multiple roles. There's other things that go into sexual function, but testosterone is certainly a big one. But mood swings, memory loss, fatigue, uncontrolled weight gain. But you're gaining weight, but you're losing muscle, right? So it's okay to gain weight if you're getting leaner and bigger muscle mass. I was like, but when it happens the opposite way, guys, yeah, I hate yeah. to say it, man. I hate to say it, but yeah. there's hormones involved in, with age. And everybody's like, oh, I'm just getting older. And I'm like, yeah, you're getting older and your hormonal system shutting down. So what do mm-hmm. you expect? Mm-hmm. This is part of longevity and, and stuff like that. So, you know, we look at all that stuff. and. Yeah. Most people are not happy with those kinds of things. So, if okay. they could come in and say, I'm not happy, those are the things, Darren. We're all, okay, by the way, I'm going to stop you. <laughs> we're all literally like, oh, I want to get the next one. I want to get the next one. I got another question. Because <laughs> we're all literally yeah. living. Like, yeah. I can say this. I, every single thing that you just said, I, it's it, it, a conversation my wife and I have had, or we've had yeah. every single one of these things. And we're like, dropping a bit. So Ben, go. Yeah, well, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to bring it home. Yeah. And that leads me to my question is, the skeptic in me thinks, okay, how much of this is just in my head and, and I'm just not working hard enough? And, or how much is actual hormone, a hormone issue? I would say both. I mean, look, if somebody takes a, a dosage of testosterone, they're immediately going to be like, I must be Superman now. Mm-hmm. So there is, a men- there is a mental component to that. But I think that after a while, you start looking back over you know, what, you know, how you've been feeling and you realize, I, I can't have a placebo for six weeks. Right. You know what I mean? I'm mean, after a while, I think the placebo component kind of dr- drifts away. And I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where I like to video people like this is where you were, be- you know, before we started because people forget how crappy they felt. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then you video them again and then you show them the old one. And they're like, I can't believe I used to feel like they, they just say this. I can't believe I let myself get that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you mentioned, you know, longevity. Um, I want to let, let's look at this from a 35 year old like myself, and I want to make sure that at 50 I'm functioning and I'm not just admitting that I'm old. Right. And that, yeah. that I'm just waiting to die like Darren. Right. Like I want, <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want to be, and, and my goal is, is when I was early on in fatherhood and I've gotten an eight, eight year old as my oldest, my goal was to be, I want, I want to be able to be 50 and still 
you know, outdo my kids and be on the lake and still be really functional. I don't want to be that dad that is old and beat up and can't wrestle with his kids and his, his teenage kids. So let's talk longevity. What is the yeah. path to say, okay, not, not that this is the fountain of youth, but can this add to quality of life down the road and potentially length of life? Well, that's a good question. I mean, so the first thing is somebody like, you know, your age, you come in and, and I look at your labs and, and I might say to you, look, man, there is, if I give you testosterone, the only thing that's going to happen is it's just going to mess up your own really good testosterone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are some people that it's like, I, I don't think you need this yet, but I might give some nutrition that would, it will enhance it for a while. And then if it starts to taper off, we might start talking a little bit more about it. And I have, I've had people that have been 35 and now they're 41 and they're like, look, things have changed quite a bit. It's been six years. So they become a candidate, but we don't just push everybody into that. And so my goal is to optimize you at this age and optimize you at this age and then at this age. And so when you're 50, you feel like you, you know, felt when you were 35 and at 35, you may be like, man, I'm falling apart. I don't feel like I used to, but wait till you're 50. You'll be like, dang, I, yeah. wish, I wish I felt like Trust I was 35. Me. Trust me, judge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, you know what, bro? Before don't. we go on, that's, you know, your damn workout. So Ben trains me, right? But he yeah. wants to train me and I, you know, he wants me to use the same weights that oh, he's freaking using. Oh, here. Okay, you're, you're 10 pounds. I'm 10 pounds less <laughs> on him, but he's like 32, 33 years. I'm 51. I can't train that way anymore. You know what I mean? I, I want to be able to, but it's we can fix that, Darren. Huh? We can fix that. Come on. Right. I, think, right. I definitely need to say. I know you've already. You know, talk, we've had our conversations. I, I'll be in there at some point soon. Yeah, but I mean, Darren's also was all. I mean, Darren, if you don't mind me saying, he was also very honest. He's like, "Look, man, I don't want to do this any sooner than I have to, and I don't want to do it unless." My symptoms and my labs reflect this, and we weren't. We we don't. We wouldn't do it anyway. Right. You know, we would look at you and say, if there's a time and the symptoms line up with your labs and it's appropriate, that's whenever we execute. You know what we're going to do, but I mean, really skepticism. I I don't. As long as, like I said, you got somebody that's looking out for your safety, that's monitoring you and giving you the right dosage and and giving it to you in a way that. I really think keeps the levels really flat and even keeled. Mm -hmm. so, it's not you're you're not going to walk around feeling like a, a, a roid monster. Right, right. Mm -hmm. To that example you just used a, a minute ago, somebody comes in and they don't need it yet. That, let's let's just hey, here's some things you can do nutrition wise. What other natural uh, elements can they em, em, uh, employ in their life to keep that testosterone up? What are some other good things they can do without testosterone therapy? Well, and I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to say this a second ago. And remember that none of this really is this. This is all pointless without exercise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really interesting. People are like, I'm going to take a ton of testosterone. And then what? Well, I'm going to sit around and eat and watch TV. And, I, and what I say is you're just going to you're not you're not going to get any of the benefits out of it. So remember that when you start doing any of these hormonal replacements, your body does heal faster. You can exercise without feeling like you're going to die at 53. Okay. And it, it also enhances performance to where you might see some gains, e even if, even if it's not being used for performance enhancement, remember performance enhancement has a lot of definitions to it. Yeah. It's like, I can get out of bed and walk and I can, you know, go do, you know, a little bit of exercise. So exercise will keep your testosterone much, much higher for a longer period of time. And you'll need it less rather than the person that is very sedentary. They'll need it sooner, gaining weight, not doing anything, uh, not doing anything vigorous. They will uh, they will have problems much faster, typically. So are you providing a diet as well that, along with this? I mean, is, is it a – I know you're not providing – maybe not the, the workout regimen itself, but, I mean, you, you're, you're, at, you're basically asking them to, to work out, but is there a diet? Because I know one thing you do is you do a lot of lab blood labs, and are you giving them some of that information as far as what they should be eating? Well, one of the things that we're, we're moving more towards is, is programs where it's like, okay, I'm not just going to give you some hormones and let you run off and not get everything out of it. I mean, you know, we have health coaches and people that deal with nutrition. I deal with nutrition and we look at things that you should and shouldn't be eating and we optimize that. And, and I think that that's huge because it's like, we want, we want everything to synergistically work together. You know, like maybe you fast a little here and you, you eat this much protein and you have this many calories for your age and your activity level and things like that. So I think that that's important that we put that in there. Mm -hmm. 
And then we usually use nutrition that will support in anything. It'll support your testicular system. It'll support the drug that you're using. Um, and sometimes we even do genetic tests because some people don't metabolize these medications out the right way. So giving them can cause problems. Mm. You know, so looking at the more I, I learn about this, the more I realize that if you don't look at all of those other things that are around that, that, that one drug, um, you end up getting uh, a secondary problem. And they're like, man, I don't know what's worse the way I felt before I came in or the way I feel now dealing with using this medication. We try to minimize that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the female demographic, because obviously hormonally that is it's probably more complex than, than male, right? We're talking about testosterone with males, but do you guys treat the, you know, females and women with hormonal imbalances? Oh yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it, it is definitely more com Well, I'd say it's more complicated. I mean, both of them can become very complicated. Mm -hmm. I mean, believe me. And, but you know, females, it's like, Hey, they've got to have a certain amount of estrogen that has to be balanced, but they go through menopause, you know, so we have pre peri and post menopause. So everything really shifts. You have to keep your eye on that very carefully because one month they may need one thing and the next month they may need another thing. And then all of a sudden they're in menopause and then they're post menopausal and within a year, what you're giving them can change dramatically. And I think the doctors that don't look at that stuff and map it out, they end up getting a lot of really angry female patients. But mm -hmm. And, and girls, you know, they they get low testosterone, too. They get the tiredness, the mood swings, the anxiety. Their libido crashes, too. Um, one of the things that I have noticed is that if we don't dose it right, that's where I start to see the – with guys, I don't see a lot of rage. I, mm -hmm. I see a lot of, like, emotional instability when it's too low. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I really do, man. But with females <laughs> – if you don't get the dosage right, a lot of times you'll see a husband, he'll come in and he'll be whimpering like, what are you going to, you know, do something with her. You, 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 <laughs> I didn't hang, I didn't hang the hand tails right. <laughs> but it's really the, the symptoms are the same thing. And, and one of the things I see in particular is a lot of joint pain um, and, and muscle loss. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things that women want, and, and guys want this too, they want to lose weight. But what, what they really don't know that they want is they, they want to be hard and firm underneath that skin where they lost that weight yeah. because when they've lost that weight and then they don't have any muscle hardness it, it doesn't look like what they thought it was going to look like right and uh you know so there there is something to the female figure where when you have that firmness um it, it makes the weight loss all that much better and guys want to be the same way you guys got to realize once you lose muscle tissue those cells don't undergo mitosis so you don't get them back mm. Um, you can only gr you can only grow the ones you have. Right. Right. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm really big on not losing muscle tissue. It's not to me not cool. Yeah. So so are you treating couples like married couples? I mean, would it benefit the, for the, the husband and wife to come in together? Because you don't want to just treat, <laughs> treat the husband. Yeah, yeah. He's like <laughs> down yeah. the street next week. Like well, Damn, I need to have it. You know. <laughs> There, there's nothing worse than seeing the husband humping the wall, and, uh, and the like wife coming home, <laughs> picking up the kids' it's hallway. <laughs> I mean, if it's unbalanced, yeah, um, there's a problem. You know, if if it's there, if we don't have things, if we have things that are unbalanced, there's a problem. So a lot of times, one will come in and be like, "I want to feel like them." Yeah, and so we end up treating couples sometimes if they need it. Dr. Brock, I was, I was kind of going towards, okay, what are some of the, some of the potential side effects that people can see, you know, whether, whether it's long-term, short-term that you maybe are, you see clients come in that have gotten treatments elsewhere that they're like, Hey, I'm, I, I've got too much or I've got too little, but these are some of the side effects that I've seen. And then also, you know, one of the things that I've heard, it may be a myth, but testosterone causing cancer. Is that, no. is there, is that valid? Mm -hmm. Is that real? I mean, and, and if so, what causes that? Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a bit. I'm going to give you something to kind of chew on here a little bit. And this is actually in the literature. Okay, so this is not me just making it up. Now, you got to understand something. Testosterone protects you from cancer cells replicating. Hmm. Estrogen makes it to where they replicate at a higher rate. Now, that is really referenced pretty heavily now. So, what happens in a lot of guys is they take testosterone and their estrogen goes way up and then maybe they stop and their testosterone drops 
or they're insulin resistant and they don't do much and their estrogen's going up but their testosterone's low. So they don't have the actual, and this is going to sound very opposite of what a lot of people think. They don't have the protective benefits of, of, of testosterone, but they've got the negative component of estrogen being very non-protective and helping cells replicate like cancer cells. So I think that balancing out the ratio between testosterone and estrogen is very protective if done right. And I'm not going to say we use it to treat cancer, but if you do it right, it's, it's really a safe thing. Mm. And especially if it's non-synthetic and it's bioidentical, you don't get the secondary effects like abnormal hair growth is bad and, you know, the acne is bad and things like that. There are some things that if you if you do it wrong and do too much, mm -hmm. you will have shrunken testicles. You will oh. have hair where you don't want it. If you don't control your estrogen, you can grow, you know, man boobs. We have people that come in that have some bad stuff. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the those side effects, if you are dosed correctly and you're managing estrogen, I mean, does the, the acne, the hair, I mean, that all can be managed if you're on the correct levels. Yeah, and there's also things that we can give in concert with testosterone that, that helps those things. Okay. And so, you know, you may have to take this, you may have to take that with it. Um, but, yeah, there's, always, there's a way to always control whatever we're looking at. Okay. Sometimes you have to take something extra or sometimes you have to, you know, alter a dosage, but it, it can be managed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's one thing. And, and again, we're really real and transparent. That's one thing that I've always kind of just struggled with is just skin issues. Right. And I, and I'll break out if like football, I always had on my shoulders and back where I wore my shoulder pads, I always broke out or I always like where I was wearing my helmet, I'd break out on my neck. So that's one of the big fears. If I ever get into it, it's like, you always hear oh, if you take testosterone, you're going to get back knee and you're going to get all this and you're going to get all that. Yeah. I always so, hear the same. I mean, yeah. you, you hear the, the acne, but then yeah. you also hear, and you just said it, balls. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, hey, don't mess well, with my balls, know, man. But hold on. But, hey, but, but does it make you look bigger? <laughs> yeah, well. It's a give and take. Say, uh, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, what's funny is a lot of people say, man, it makes your, it makes everything shrink. Well, actually, your, your, Member. You know, your unit, your unit will get bigger, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're in. <laughs> hey, hey, Doc, you got an opening today at four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're all signed up. Uh, I've got appointments at two thirty. <laughs> so, how often are you? Changed. Your your whole crowd just pulled off. The road. <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> how often are you monitoring blood blood work, and and what does that process look like as far as you know how? Again, how often you're doing that? Yeah, well, it depends on if you're female or male. But you got to remember the very first thing that we're going to do is what I what I start you out with. It may not be what you end up with. So we this is kind of like sculpting, you know. Yeah. You, you you have to be a little bit of an artist at it. So sometimes we have to go through two or three rounds over the course of a few months, and then we eventually get to the point where we where we want to be. And that also depends on the delivery method. So mm -hmm. talk through that. Cool. Yeah, talk through the pretty delivery cool. method. Well, there's injection, you know, but that has up and down mm -hmm. and you got to poke yourself and it's usually in an oil base and there's several oil bases and I've had patients react violently to cotton seed or to grape seed or, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on what's in it. And, and, uh, you know, but there's some people that do really well with it. Um, and then there's, you know, some people, we just put a pellet in them and it, and it stays very, very smooth and it's nice and bioidentical and I can control that. But I usually do that once I know what their level what what they do good with so a lot of times i'll put people on something get them kind of figure out what they need and then once that happens you can put a pellet in them and it'll last for three or four months describe that a pellet anything. a pellet in them what is that so you just surgically put a pellet in sort of their i go through the back of their rear and then off to the side and then you just put the pellet underneath the skin and it just dissolves over time and it mm. keeps those levels nice mm. and nice and smooth oh. Okay. So you're not constantly getting shots. You're just, that, that pellet is what sustains you for the three or four months. That's right. And then there's creams that you can rub on you. But you remember, those are, again, up and down, and you can't get as much as you really want. Some mm -hmm. people that are really, really just barely needing some, will we may talk about a cream. Okay. Right. And then there's things, you know, you can put in your mouth and they dissolve and so forth. I don't like <sighs> giving testosterone orally because most of the time it, it's very difficult for the liver. So, yeah. I like getting people to pellets, but at the right time. 
Yeah. Right. You know, I, can, I can speak to this because when we did the functional neurology, I, I remember going through the process and I just wanted to feel better. I mean, that's all I could yeah. think about. Is, God, I'm so tired. I got brain fog and I'm hurting. And I remember going through the process where we did the labs and you do the labs. And then the next, you know, a couple of days later, you know, again, I'm impatient. You know, I want to get this done. <laughs> and, and Brock and, and Dr. Brock and, and Dr. Kagan at the time were, were working with me. And it was a process. It wasn't, I didn't get anything. I mean, it wasn't like, it was like, hey, let's wait and see what your labs tell us to do. And then what your blood yeah. work tells us to do. So it wasn't like you guys, you guys didn't make decisions on the fly. And then you tested nope. things out and then you were like, okay, this works. And then, then you took the next step uh, going, going forward. Talk to me about if I wanted to, if it was me and I wanted to go through this process and I didn't want the pellets I mean, would you, you're going to talk, tell me exactly what I needed to do. But as far as maintaining the maintenance side of this, is this an every week maintenance or is this a once every month maintenance? How does this work? Well, uh, there's a couple things that depends on. First of all, it obviously depends on the patient. And, and a lot of it has to do with how much I trust that patient and how unhealthy they are. Mm. You know, I mean, if they're super unhealthy, then I get a little worried. And if they have what I consider not the best liver, the best kidneys, Sometimes they're not even a candidate, but you want to make sure you monitor things, you know, first do no harm. Right. right. And so I really would say that everybody is, is very, um, uh, and they're very unique. Really. I think we don't have much of a cookbook. I mean, I have a, a sort of a way a skeleton that I, I kind of weave through, but you know, we've done lab work before and found people that were super anemic and that's what needed to be treated or they've had other diseases. And I'm like, look, don't even worry about the testosterone. I'm like you got this. And we need to deal with this. So a lot of times in the journey of finding out, you know, your testosterone, we find something else that just has got to be fixed before we even consider something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. From a cost perspective, what are we looking at as far? Is it a, a weekly cost, monthly? What does that look like? Well, I mean, if you have the criteria to meet the diagnoses of, you know, testosterone deficiency, um, you know, the cost is really it's not that bad. I mean, I know our cost is not that bad. If you get pellets, it's one price. If you're if you're getting injections, it's one price. I mean, it's it's about the same price as really another medication. Sometimes insurance pay for it. Sometimes they don't. It depends on what kind of insurance you have. It's that 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 varies more than the individual. So, what I find is is it's not typically something that's out of reach for somebody that has you know enough money to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And it, if I put a pellet in, by the time you average it out, it's usually about the same amount as if they get it, you know, somewhere else and they're taking it weekly or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it all pretty much balances out. And we're putting a lot of extra stuff in our program. Like you get some dietary stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, you may get nutrition and, you know, you get the nutrition at a, at a bit of a discount because it's part of a program. Right. And so, I, it, you know, we're doing everything we can to make people be able to afford these things so that it's not like, you know, I did it once felt great, but I just can't keep doing it. Right. Yeah. So what's, what's a number, like a, if you're budgeting for the month, what, what's like just a, I mean, a ballpark figure that somebody could think about? I, you know, I would say that somebody probably needs to, and again, this is ballpark for me yeah. too, because sure. I don't, you know, anywhere from probably 100 to $250 a month. Okay. It depends on how many medications you need, how many supplements you need and stuff like that. I know the pellets over the course of four months, you know, may be around a hundred dollars a month, but it's one of those things where, again, some people need some other stuff around mm -hmm. that. Some people really need a lot of love and attention and right. I need to see them more often. Mm -hmm. So it's very, that's why I don't have just one price for a program. Sure. Yeah. Like a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just trying to get an you, idea. You of, yeah. yeah. And I think the biggest thing that, that listeners need to hear is that this is an investment in yourself. And if you can function at a much higher level at what your potential is, Think about the ROI on that, on mm -hmm. investing in yeah. yourself and being healthy. I know for me, like, again, like all of these things that you've talked about, I'm like, okay, I'm experiencing that. I'm experiencing that. I'm not self-diagnosing myself, but I just think, okay, hey, if I could function just a little bit better, if I could feel more healthy, if I was more motivated to work out, if I, all these things mm -hmm. that like I'm thinking about, how much better at work would I be? How much right. more earning potential could I give myself if I'm functioning at the level that I'm supposed to function at? Better father as well. Better husband. 100%. Yes. 100%. Yeah. 
I'm gonna have to hire you, man, to do all the marketing. Hey, <laughs> fair <laughs> enough, man. Fair enough. We can figure out a trade, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and, and you're right. The return on investment is. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that spend a hundred bucks on stuff that really, in the, at the end of the day, means nothing. Over, well, I was just yeah, say, over a GNC, yeah, and, g- gym memberships that you never even show up and use. You know, a hundred bucks a month. Yeah. So. Chad over there at GMC was giving me some really good advice on some stuff that I needed to take. <laughs> You talking about Chad? <laughs> yeah. <I used. laughs> That's where you should keep going, man. Yeah. The whole eighteen year old kid. Wait, so Chad is not qualified to tell me. Wait, hold on. <laughs> so I would imagine the the way you feel, you're gonna want to be on this forever and, and there's never gonna be an end date. But what does the literature say in the study show about if I start at thirty two, am I gonna take this until I'm eighty two? Like what does that look like yeah. for the long term? I, I, well, I haven't been doing this for 50 years, first of all. Right. Clin- clinically, I don't know. Um, I know. And I know that from a clinical perspective, I really, like I said, I honeymoon people. I don't want them on it. I really need their their brain, their pituitary gland, and their testicles to, to realize what normal physiology is. So I, I do give them breaks. Mm-hmm. And that's just something that I have been doing. And I don't even know that that's really a standard protocol like across you know, the, the country or even in other parts of the world, I do it because I just think nature's nature, man. I need to, I need to not take that completely away because then you will be on it for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people may make the decision that they don't want to do this for the rest of their life. I still want there to be enough function maintained to where we can taper them off one thing, give them a little something to push their testicles and turn them back on and to turn their brain back on. And then, and then you leave them alone and they're kind of back to where they were and they feel okay for their age I, I try to do this in a way to where i don't rob the the chances of them ever going back off of it from them. right okay so you're talking to let's just speak to to men right now um what are some things that they can change in their habit if they're not feeling good all the things that we've talked about if they're not feeling this what are some of the things that they can do to say okay look i can clean up my diet for a little bit i can exercise i can do these things but if those things don't produce the results that, and if they're disciplined to those that, okay, I need to go see someone because it really sounds like it's a testosterone deficiency. What are some of the things to like really test this out to see, okay, I need to go see Dr. Brock. Just come see Dr. Brock. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, yeah. no, but, look, but look, I will say this and remember that there's, there's internists and primary care providers all, all over Dallas and the country that they either do like this or they don't like this. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it's liver and onions, man. Some people, you know, enjoy it. Some people just don't. And some of the people are like, this is terrible. It's going to cause cancer. Mm-hmm. You know, your genitals are going to fall off yep. and everything's going to go bad. And then there's some doctors that have learned about it. And they're like, look, there's ways to do this in a way that's healthy. I would just say this. If this is what you're interested in, find a provider that, you know, has this interest. It's, it's just the same thing with diabetes. If you go to a doctor that really doesn't care much about diabetes and if your blood sugar's up a little bit, ah, eh, what's the big deal about your diet? Who gives a you know, flip? Mm-hmm. Find somebody that will actually look at this stuff and look at your the functional levels, not just these broad levels, and do stuff to optimize you but not be ridiculous about it. And to look at your safety first and not just look at how they can make a buck. And I think if you find the right provider and believe me, there's there's plenty of them in Dallas, okay? Mm-hmm. If you do that, man, you're set. You're going to, you're going to enjoy, you're going to have a, probably a good experience. You're probably not going to have a bad reaction. And as long as you have good communication and rapport with that provider, you know, and you can call them up and say, look, this ain't right. Because so there will be things that are not right. And you'll say, look, I, this has happened and this has happened. And they're there for you. And they answer those things. You're going to love this. Right. But if you go to a doctor and you're, you're at 301, not below 300, they're like, you don't qualify. And you're like, but look, man, I'm so depressed. I'm gaining weight. Like I have almost no erectile function. They're just going to throw Cialis at you. And, yeah. and you may you may be able to get erections, but you just don't have any desire to do much. And you're just still this. You're you're just one of those guys that wants to sit around and really just do nothing. Mm-hmm. I love, and, though, going back to the functional neurology aspect of it. If you have a brain injury or if you have an underlying issue that is causing this and it's not just a quick fix like, hey, we just we need to monitor your testosterone and that's going to fix everything. Like, the, I love your holistic approach to this, that it's not just one answer fix all. 
It's, hey, let's figure out what the issue is and let's address that. Like if your testosterone is low, it may be because you have a brain, uh, a brain issue, like uh, some neurological uh, uh, issue in your brain that now doesn't allow this. If we fix that, then maybe your testosterone can, can recover or we can supplement it to get it going, kickstart it, whatever it is. But not just a, this isn't, again, this isn't a testosterone clinic, right? And I love that approach. It's not, we're just going to pump you with, with some drugs. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, remember, think about this. Okay. So I have a head injury that causes testosterone to go low. And now the low testosterone makes it harder to recover from the head injury. Mm -hmm. Do you, right. you see the loop? There's, <clears throat> there's, right. there, there, yeah. there's hundreds, there's hundreds of these loops that we put together and uh, we've realized this is one of the problems why people don't recover completely from head injuries because one of these loops has not been addressed. Yeah. I so, mean, there's one for the thyroid. There is one for estrogen. There's one from your gut. There's one from inflammation. You really, when I look at testosterone, I'm not just, I, first of all, I want to know why. Right. Why are you having symptoms? Like, you know, we try to go back. And, and then we try to correct as many things as we can that will augment your health. And then if we need to, we can put that on top of it you know, if you're just some organs, just kind of, they yeah. just sort of, you know, well, as, so as, you we, do something. Yeah, as we, as we wrap up here, you, you mentioned there's a lot of good ones in Dallas. We've got listeners all over the country, really all over the world. Mm -hmm. What are some credentials to look for if I'm in Los Angeles or I'm in New York or wherever, what do I, what am I looking for from a provider that I can trust and that I know is going to do a good job for me? Well, I mean, I, I would always, here, here's the deal. I would never let anybody uh, put hormones in me unless I've interviewed them, you know, and like, what is your philosophy behind it? Mm -hmm. How are you going to take care of my health? How are you going to make sure that I'm not getting sick? How are you going to make sure that this is something three months from now is, is appropriate as it is today? And, you know, the credentials are, you know, practicing medicine and you've got a, a good, you know, you, prescription rights, obviously, but they've been trained in hormones. They, they understand how to read labs. They understand how to, you know, take a good patient history and then they understand how to dose. And then I personally, I like to have a team. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've got a good internist I work with. I've got a good, you know, nutritional person that I work with. I've got a good medical assistant that is amazing at getting these labs. And I really enjoy the lab part and, and, and saying, we need this and this and this, and let's add a little bit of that, and let's do this for safety, and then keep it under control. And then I also like having relationships with endocrinologists, so if something's not right and I find something that I'm very uncomfortable with, I can send it to them and know that they'll take care of it. Mm. So it's, the hat, whatever, whoever you use across the country, they, they need to be not just a lone ranger, I would say. Yep. They need to not be afraid to share patients with those who can help maybe where you can't. And then they, they have to find a doctor that loves this stuff. Yeah. 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 I, I can yeah. tell, we can tell yeah. by your passion yeah. and the way you're answering these. I mean, absolutely. but it you goes beyond. Yeah, yeah. But it goes. And again, you know, the relationship and I, he and I have had for years, it goes beyond just the doctor client patient yeah. relationship. It's, you know, we have a conversation mm -hmm. and, and it's some of the conversations we had, I don't like them. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I didn't like him, but they, but he's real. He's been real with me, and, and I think that's the way. That's what you need to find in your provider is mm -hmm. there has to be a relationship. It can't just be I show up at the office. Mm -hmm. He tells me what to do. It's got to be. He's calling me during the at night. You know, getting to know what's going on with me. And that's and that, and I appreciate you with uh, with our relationship and that we've had for over the number of years. Yeah, man. Well, I well I, listen. I obviously appreciate the opportunity to come on and just hang out with you guys. Much, mm -hmm. much less if there's anybody that can get any help from this. It is really, it's a good message, number one. Num number two, there's a lot of guys that are just, just like what you said, Darren, they're, they're not comfortable with this part of life because it shows vulnerability, yeah. and vulnerability, yeah. mm -hmm. for some reason, for some reason, signifies weakness when it's really not. Yeah. And uh, man, we're all going to get older. There's nothing you can do about it, you know. So how do yeah. we find you, so, Doc? Yeah. How, how do we find you if, if uh, we got listeners out there right now, you know, how do they get, get a hold of you? It's really easy. I am at drbrock.com. How did you get that one? That's awesome. You know what's funny is, <laughs> I got, I'll, I'll tell you this last story. I've been trying to get it for years, and there's a dentist that owned it that, you know, since like 1998 or something, he passed away, and it was up for auction. You're an opportunist. I got it, I, yeah. I, I, I got it man. I was like, that, boom. Yeah, yeah. Actually, my wife found it. She's like, guess what I got? I uh, like, yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, it's, yeah, it's funny. Darren doesn't even own his own, yeah. own name no, on the no, internet. No, I got it now. It's mine now. <laughs> he has to say this: the real, 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 the real, 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 real. <laughs> he he paid a little bit more than I did for yeah. my name on the internet. <laughs> no, but it's just drbrock.com. There's no period. Just D R B R O C K. Okay. Love dot com. It. It's about. I mean, I can't make it any more simple than that. But if and, you get on there, you'll probably end up talking to Tara. Tara will probably end up talking to you. My, I don't have a ton of hours. And we spend a lot of time with patients. So mm -hmm. it's Love not that. like uh, you come in for a five minute visit and, you know, that's all we do. And we have yeah. a limited practice too. If I don't feel like it's a challenging case or it's something that myself and my collaborators work with, then we, you know, we just don't do it. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people are better served at their own provider or their yeah. own doctor or somewhere else. And, and one of the things is, you can't call me from Germany and say, can you give me, you know, testosterone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right. not going to ship it. Yeah, a box full of testosterone. <laughs> it, for it's, it's a very controlled substance. Yeah. We have to be very careful with how we're utilizing it. We have to utilize it with extreme caution because of medical necessity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we take that stuff seriously. So, man, just if you have any questions, you can always schedule a time just to talk. Like if you want to, you know, just be an interview over the phone, it's just, just call. Cool. Yeah. I love that. I got one one question, uh, and this is really to, speaking to myself, but I think a lot of people in our culture do this. Um, they self prescribe some sort of of stimulant, right? If they're if they're low, like I know for me, caffeine is something. So whether it's coffee, whether it's energy drink, whether it's something, right? <laughs> yeah, Doctor Brock, Brock, he yeah. drinks at least a thousand milligrams of caffeine a That's day. That's false. It's seven fifty. <laughs> I cut we'll, it off we'll at seven fifteen. <laughs> but so, what are the negative effects of caffeine? I mean, if there are, because you know, there's some studies that say coffee can be good and caffeine can be utilized in in a positive way, but then I mean, I'm assuming that it's not good. It's Well, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. There's a study that just came out that I was interviewed all on a bunch of radio stations about, you know, two to three cups of coffee a day being good versus three or four not being good. And what we found out is that you can drink a fair amount of coffee and still be healthy. Uh -huh. But but you also got to you also have to monitor your pulse. You know, you don't want to get tachycardia. You don't want to overstress your heart. I mean, if you got congestive heart failure or a little bit of cardiac damage, the worst thing you could do is overwork that. Thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say this once again, your doctor's always going to, or should always say, you know, how much, how many caffeinated beverages, how much caffeine are you having a day? And then they look at your vitals. And if it doesn't add up, I'm not going to give you something like testosterone or anything until we get your vitals down under control. Like your blood pressure has to be under control. Your heart rate has to be under control. Cause if those things aren't, we, those things need to be dealt with first. Mm -hmm. Is there any correlation between caffeine and testosterone? Um, I'm sure there is somewhere, man. I, okay. I, I think maybe if you have too much, too much caffeine, you're probably uh, a little producing. overzealous. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, listen, I know we, we're, yeah. we, we've held you a long time yeah. here. Doc, I know one thing that uh, we want to have you back on as far as heart disease at yeah. some point. And yeah, to further that. discussion on functional neurology. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to know why I can't read so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and female hormones too. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even get into the really get uh, the deep dive on like my wife, Tiffany, of course, you know, well, yeah. tip, uh, who's a patient. She was adamant about, having the conversation on female hormones mm -hmm. like nah, don't, yeah. don't forget the male hormone side you need to better understand your wife yeah. and we yeah. and, and men need to do that we, yeah. we all need to hear that from you uh, the next time around man but really appreciate your time we'll get back to you we'll be back on the darren Witchin show uh at some point down the line man but uh thanks again for having me. hey thanks guys y'all have a great day great weekend be safe and uh remember Keep your testosterone where it should be. That's right. Keep humping right. them walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Walk out walls. Here we go. <laughs> I appreciate it.